Welcome to EPB Group Berhad. Established in 1992, our group has been our one-stop solutions provider, specializing in holistic solutions for all your food processing, packaging, and refrigeration needs. Our services include design food packaging and processing machines to render 3D production line layouts and also customizing and fabricating turnkey solutions for food production lines. We source our machines from external suppliers or fabricate them in-house. We offer machines that cater to different stages of food processing operations, including physical processing such as grinding and mixing heat processing, such as cooking and boiling, and preservation, such as freezing. Our machines can process any type of food, from dry food to liquids, and processed meats, such as sausages and nuggets. We have vast cross-industry experience in the processes required to manufacture and package commercial foods. Our food processing and packaging machinery solutions can be combined to create a completely automated production line for our customers that are compatible with various packaging, such as boxes and bags. We assemble the machines according to the customer's specific requirements and then conduct factory acceptance tests to ensure compliance with all contractual specifications and global standards. We are committed to integrate cutting-edge robotics technology into our processing and packaging machinery solutions in keeping with the Industry 4.0 trend. This will enhance the efficiency, safety, and quality of food production while reducing the need for human labor, benefiting both businesses and consumers. As a one-stop solutions provider, we also supply and manufacture flexible packaging materials in various forms, such as sachets, soft packs, and rolls. Our team can design packaging based on the customer's required graphics, which will be printed, laminated, cured, and slit before delivery. We also trade cellulose casings used in frozen food manufacturing to shape and protect meat products like sausages. Ensuring that food items remain fresh and chill is crucial for food manufacturers and distributors. We specialize in providing guidance on refrigeration system layout to enhance operational efficiency. We can also customize industrial racking with shelving solutions to improve warehouse organization and simplify loading and unloading. Additionally, we offer docking and paneling systems for the safe and efficient movement of goods in and out of a warehouse. We take pride in providing our solutions to 600 clients in Malaysia and other international markets our subsidiaries are also ISO certified, showing our commitment to maintain a stringent quality standard. At EPB Group, we are dedicated to elevating the excellence of food processing and packaging machinery solutions offered in the global market. We aim to inspire possibilities through the innovation of automation and robotics technology in the food manufacturing sector. Together, we can work towards achieving your distinctive goals with the assurance of quality and integrity. EPB Group Berhad, elevating excellence, inspiring possibilities. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for the copyright video. Just now, the brief background on the EPB Group Berhad. Okay, tonight here we have EPB Group Berhad will be um will be listed on Ace Market on twenty third of August. EPB Group, like just now uh, from the corporate video, is a one-stop food processing and packaging machine, uh, machinery solution provider. And later, our management team will provide more details on it. And we get honored to have here the company managing director, Mr. Yong. Hi, Mr. Yong. And our deputy managing director, Mr. Uh, Liao. 
Hi, and our CFO, Mr. Tan, and our group financial official, uh, Mr. Law. Okay, then without further ado, we will start our presentation now. Over to you, Yen. Hi, thanks, Ms. Yen. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, yeah, everything is good. Okay, great. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so to get started, we'll go through a brief summary of the group just to brief everyone on what we're about. Uh, we are a one-stop solutions provider uh, and our company was incorporated in Malaysia as a private limited company. Um, and we eventually became EPB Group um, as an investment holdings company and a public limited company in 2023. So since then, we've operated under that name as a focus company. And the group itself is made up of several different subsidiaries that provide a one-stop solution for food processing and packaging machinery solutions. We're primarily involved in the design, customization, fabrication, integration, and automation of different production lines, particularly used by the food manufacturing industry. And we base what we make on whatever our customers' needs are, generally speaking. We're also involved in several different complementary products to our machineries, namely cellulose casing, as well as the manufacturing and training of flexible packaging materials. In terms of our vision and mission, our vision as a group is to be recognized globally as a trusted partner for all of our customers to drive innovation and to deliver turnkey solutions for them across several different markets. Our mission is to offer competitively priced food processing and packaging automation solutions, as well as robotics technology integrations, revolutionary flexible packaging and cellulose casing products to elevate the Southeast Asian food sector to global standards, particularly in hygiene, quality, and efficiency. At EPB Group, we have three core values that we hold very true to our company. We believe that excellence is the foundation of our success, and we strive to excel in everything that we do by maintaining a very high standard. Um, we also strive for continuous improvement, both externally and internally, and we're committed to achieving the best results possible. Passion fuels the work that we do throughout the company, and we approach every endeavor with it, as well as enthusiasm and dedication to the work. And we believe that it's this passion that drives our innovation and it inspires us to make a positive change in the world. We also believe that our mission as a team is to make a difference. We believe that this unwavering belief is what inspires our actions and drives us to overcome challenges that we may face along the way, and also to help us achieve excellence to create a better future for all of our stakeholders. Our business model can be summarized in three parts, so I will start off with the first one being the provision of food processing and packaging machinery solutions. This is the bulk of our uh, revenue stream, and in this business model, our group provides food processing and packaging machinery solutions tailored to a diverse range of food products, primarily to food manufacturers um, and food processing companies. Um, our expertise lies in seamlessly integrating uh, in-house made machines as well as machines that we procure from third parties into a larger line um, for automated processing and packaging for our clients. These lines are designed and customized to meet their specific needs, whatever their needs may be at the time. And we try to ensure optimal efficiency and functionality throughout their production process. So this particular business model or business segment um, is comprised of four different parts. The first one being the actual machinery itself. The second being the uh, integration of in-house and third-party machineries. The third being the replacement of parts in terms of spare parts or anything else. And the last one being the after-sales service warranty and repairs. 
This particular revenue contribution makes up 82.33% of our revenue, which is the equivalent of 100.54 million. The second business model of ours is the trade of cellulose casing, which is the next slide. This is a complementary product for the group, um, and we are involved in the trading of cellulose casing, mainly used in the manufacturing of sausages. Cellulose casing is a consumable product used by the frozen food manufacturers to protect the meat, um, generally sausages, uh, during the production process. So cellulose casing comes in generally three types of materials that we trade. The first one being clear casing, second is color transfer casing, and then third is printed casing. This particular trade of cellulose casing uh, contributes to 11.92% of our revenue, which is equivalent to 14.54 million. The third and final business model and revenue stream for our company is the manufacturing and trading of flexible packaging materials. So again, this is a complementary product for our machinery offerings and involves the manufacturing as well as the trade of flexible packaging materials, um, which can come in the role uh, in the form of either rolls, packaging materials, or bags in a variety of different bags. Our group is capable of undertaking double-sided printing of up to eight colors, dry lamination, curing, as well as slitting. Um, aside from that, we also trade uh, different types of flexible packaging materials involving more than eight colors, as well as UV spot, paper, and uh, laminated materials, also in dye cut. These are some examples of the different types of flexible packaging materials that we manufacture and trade. The first being packaging film in a roll form. The second being three size sealed bags. Third is the stand up bag for a pouch and the fourth is a gusset bag. This particular revenue stream uh, contributes to 5.7% of our revenue, which is equivalent to 7.02 million. This slide just shows the general milestones that we've accomplished as a group. Um, in 1992, we were established, and from 1993 to 1996, we expanded our product offerings to include the trade of imported packaging machines. By 1998, we expanded into not just dry foods, but also frozen food processing and machinery solutions. And uh, in the following year, we commenced in-house production and fabrication of these packaging machines. So not only were we traders, by then we had also started to make our own machines in-house. By the following year, um, Easy Pack Machinery KL was formed to establish a presence in the Kuala Lumpur area. And by 2005, we began our transformation into becoming a one-stop provider of food processing and packaging machinery solutions, uh, comprising of bigger lines and turnkey solutions. By 2014, we expanded into the offering of flexible packaging materials through trade. And in 2017, we commenced our own in-house manufacturing of these flexible packaging materials. By 2018, we expanded our offerings to include cellulose casing trading. And more recently in 2022, we began to integrate the applications of robotics technology throughout our food processing and packaging machinery solutions. These are our five competitive strengths that we believe make us special. The first one being our established operating track record. We have over 30 years of experience in this field, particularly for food manufacturing and packaging. We are also a one-stop provider of food processing and packaging machinery solutions with an in-house manufacturing capability um, in order to customize more niche offerings for our customers. The third is that we collaborate very closely with our customers in product development to make sure that they're at the forefront of their industry. Um, and that's also a way that we're able to offer um, different types of machines to expand their operations and also our sales. We have a very qualified and experienced management team that heads up our operations at the group, and we're committed to stringent quality standards. Several of our subsidiaries are ISO certified. Post-IPO, this will be the general structure of our group where Mr. Yeo Chi Min uh, will hold 38.98%, Mr. Liu will hold 13.23%, Ms. Hui will hold 14.99%, Ms. 
Mr. Teo Hobo, 2.8%. Other eligible directors and key senior management within our company will hold 4.05%, and the general public will hold 25.95%. Below are the different subsidiaries that make up our group. In terms of our IPO summary, uh, we will be listed under EPB Group Burhan um, on the ACE market as an IPO. We are Sharia compliant um, and we will be offering 111.57 million IPO shares on the ACE market of Bursa Securities, comprising a public issue of 71.57 million new shares and an offer, of, offer for sale for 20, uh, 40 million existing shares as follows. Um, under the public issue shares, the Malaysian public will hold 19.57 million shares. Pink form allocations are set at 21.196 million shares. And selected Mikutra investors approved by Minty are allocated 30.804 million shares. As for our offer for sale shares, selected Mikutra investors approved by Minty will, uh, via private placement, will be allocated 15.696 million shares, while selected investors via private placement uh, are allocated 24.304 million shares, totaling to 71.57 million shares for public issue and 40 million shares for offer for sale. The IPO price for each IPO share will be 56 cents, which comes to a market cap of 208,320,001. The utilization of our proceeds will be as follows. That includes a factory expansion, um, including an acquisition of land, which will be 13 million, construction of the factory, which will be 10.5 million, as well as the purchase of machinery, which will comprise of 1.1 million. We will also be using the proceeds to be paid bank borrowings in the form of 3 million. Our working capital is estimated to be 8.4792 million and our estimated listing expenses are listed as $4 million. In terms of our industry outlook, according to our um, independent market research, um, the size of the local food and beverage processing machinery industry, which is valued at $1.73 billion um, as of last year, is set to increase at a caver of 10.1%, from $1.9 billion in 2024 to 2.84 billion in 2028. The growth in the industry is expected to be driven by several different factors, including the demand conditions for labor shortage, as well as um, an increase in adoption for more industrial automation throughout the food and beverage industry, food and beverage manufacturing industry, um, as well as positive policy support from the Malaysian government um, related to local food industries and a steady population growth as well. This is an overview of our financial highlights, revenue, gross profit, and PAT. In 2020, we had a 61.69 million revenue. Um, and in 2023, we had a 122.12 million revenue. In 2020, um, our gross profits were at 20.55 million and they raised to 40.36 million in 2023. There was a steady rise in GP margin with a very slight drop um, in 2023. Um, as for our PAT, uh, in 2020, we had a PAT of 6.3 million, um, onwards growing to 2023 with a 14.26 million PAT, um, with a 10.21% PAT margin in 2020, and ending with an 11.68% PAT margin in 2023. In terms of re revenue through our business segments, as you can see, food processing and packaging machinery solutions um, throughout the years reported still comprise of the biggest share of our revenue, um, followed by the trading of cellulose casing and manufacturing and trading of flexible packaging materials. Uh, we started out 2020 with about 50.99 50.99 million in revenue for our food processing and packaging machinery solutions, and ending in 2023 with 100.54 million ringgit in revenue 
um, for our food processing and packaging machinery solution segment. In terms of our geographical location, um, in 2020, Malaysia made up 42.67% of our geographical location by revenue. Um, and the others comprise of Indonesia, Philippines, the US, and a few other countries as well, making up 57.33% of our 2020 revenue. By 2023, Malaysia made up 30.35% of our revenue, while Indonesia, Philippines, the US, and other countries made up 69.65% of our revenue. In terms of EBITDA, we can see a rise from 2020 to 2023, where in 2020, we had a 9.47 million EBITDA, um, ending 2023 with 21.19 million in EBITDA. In terms of our basic EPS, we started at 2.1 in 2020, and now we are at 4.75 in 2023. Diluted EPS was 1.69 in 2020, and at the end of 2023, we had a diluted EPS of 3.83. In terms of our future plans, as we touched on briefly previously, um, our future plans comprise of two parts. The first one being an expansion of our business footprint in Penang. Our group intends to build a new corporate office as well as a, a factory with a warehouse and a showroom. Total buildup approximating 78,000 square feet. The purpose of this expansion is to enhance our production capabilities for particularly the food processing and packaging machinery solutions, as well as to provide extra space for our warehouse and showroom. Our second future plan is to increase the robotics footprint within this particular revenue segment for us. Um, the group intends to ride on an industrial 4.0 trend and increase the integration of robotics technology within our current food processing and packaging machinery solutions offerings. We have found an opportunity gap within the food manufacturing industry that requires more robotics technology, particularly given stringent hygiene standards that are on the rise, as well as um, pressing challenges in hiring factory workers. The use of more robotics technology will help minimize human interference and also address the worker supply gap being faced by the industry. And that concludes our introduction. All right, thanks. Thanks, Dian, for the nice presentation. I think our investor have uh, briefly understand about EPP group right now. Are you all ready for the Q&A section? Yes. Okay. Let's see for the question. The first question pop up is, is there any seasonality in EPP revenue? Uh, there is no seasonal about our business. But our trend is more, uh, you know, the activity is more at the end of the tank in the second, the third quarter. Um, because most of the factory, they purchase a uh, machine. If you look at the uh, Malaysian uh, uh, trend, we have a lot of uh, holiday at the beginning of the year. So that means that's the time they can push out the products, food products. So you got Christmas, you got Chinese New Year, and then you get the Ramadan. So normally they come a bit slow after they push out. Not they're not focused on buying machine that time. They're more focused on producing the food. So after that, after let's say if you look at this uh, after April onward, that, that's the time they start to start to purchase the new machine or the new line because uh. At the peak time, it's not a good, uh, good day to, 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 to put new machine when the, the business is available. So for the beginning of the year, beginning of the year is highly So most of the manufacturers they will not look at the to, to, to add the machine or to have the new products. 
launch at that time. They were more focused on the normal market. So our business is not seasonal, but the, our business do have the tendency of more. We are more active at the after the April, May, July. Yeah. And the add on normally on the key project the stress uh, generally six to nine months. So we actually recognize our revenue uh, on completion or delivery. So we don't actually recognize our revenue based on percentage of completion. So that that's mean uh, we normally recognize significant revenue generally due to three. Okay. The next question. Okay. Do you plan to expand your business into animal processing food machinery solutions? It's a bit, uh, yeah. Not at the moment, but we do have inquiry coming in, you know, asking the process the, the animal food. It's a bit different to the uh, human food. But uh, we may look at it, but not at this time. Okay, could you share with us how many unbuilt and ongoing order or project do you currently have? Uh, as of the LBD or the internet, we need to perform the books at the $24 million, which uh, will be completed uh, by this year. 44 million completed by this year. Okay. How we does average, oh. average our monthly order books will be raised about 40 million. Okay. How does EPP compare to its peer in this industry? Um, I think, I think we, what we do, what we are, our business is a bit different to the others. There are a lot of, uh, we actually, we, we, a lot of people call us as a machine supplier. And uh, in fact, we are machine supplier. <laughs> but the difference that we, compared to the others, we do a, so we do a turnkey. That means, uh, we provide solution. We, we will not, we, we provide a solution produce the end product for the customer. For example, if uh, someone wants to do uh, chicken nugget, for example, and uh, if he's looking for all different suppliers, he may end up like having 25 suppliers. So he, he, he can start on the, uh, you know, like uh, the, the meat, the cutter, and then he has the meat grind, he will have the, so the whole cutter, make it homogeneous, and put in the seasoning, and also, we will need the sausage casing to stick the sausage into the, the, the server's casing. Then you have to pack the the sausage. Uh, sorry, the, the nugget you have to uh, batter it, and then you have to uh, you have to uh, deep fry, it. and then you go to the call the IQM instant quick freezer to freeze the nugget immediately as as fast as we can, so that we can keep the freshness. So if you look at all these machines, all these machines are coming from all different suppliers who are specialized in each one. So having to go with, let's say, 20 suppliers, it will be very, very difficult for the manufacturer to work with so many. We are the one who talk about everything and make it to a line. And there are not many players in this market who are doing the same as what we do. But there are a lot of uh, single machine suppliers uh, in the market, but they are not, I would say they are not many who are doing the same as what we do as a solution provider. We provide until we supply the magazine material. So we do not stop at even the processing stop. If they need our assistance, we can stop at the end until we provide them the magazine material we design, supply them the magazine material. So what we do is only a marketing plan. The rest of A to Z stuff. We do the setup for the customer. Okay. 
from here, is that APB have any recurring revenue? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the sausage casing, the cellulose casing is definitely, it's definitely recurring every year. And this uh, every month, I would say, and the uh, packaging material is same also. On the machine, of course, we can make the machine very uh, bad quality, so they would last long, but that's not what we do. So we make the machine uh, last, our machine lasts almost 25 years. But the thing is, customer also not gaining a new market. A lot of the food they used to be bought from They're coming from Japan, Korea, Taiwan, um, Europe, especially the meat processing. What was coming from Europe for. And this day we are producing locally in not only in Malaysia but also in Indonesia and the Philippines and uh, many other Asian countries. We start to produce our own frozen food. And this market is, you know, frozen food is the uh, trend of, uh, say, uh, the future. Because frozen food, <coughs> you just need to heat up and you can serve. Very easy to do a bed. You don't have to spend so much time. Especially today, uh, most of the husband and wife they work, they don't have time to work. So when they go home, they just buy the frozen food, heat up, and then they can have them. So the market is going up very fast and going up because of the demand. So as our this food market go up, the demand of the sheep also increases. You have to look at more and more machine. So our customer will not uh, wait until the machine breaks down to buy. They keep buying because they have uh, expansion almost. Here. And Malaysia also export a lot of food now to other country for whatever topic. We are we are exporting a lot. This uh, treatment of this now is and it has been sustained for many years. We are not the uh, the coffee uh, country, we, are not, we don't grow much coffee. We are very small, we are like one or something percent compared to the, yeah, in the whole world. But uh, we export a lot of free, uh, instant coffee. Not good because of our, you know, we can go much earlier, develop this uh, product compared to the other country. And frozen food is uh, it's, it's a new trend. It's not quite a future food. So it will only increase, it will not increase. Okay. Just now you mentioned about the Indonesia and Philippine market. Could you explain more about this and how that's, uh, that is uh, aligned with your business expansion? Yeah, we went to, uh, we started in Indonesia many, many years back. It was very difficult at the time. I think the timing was not the right time when we went to work, and frozen food was not so popular at that time. It was expensive in Indonesia at that time, was the income was not high. So, but many years we were there, and uh, we, we, we keep you know, uh, pushing the products. And today, if you look at Indonesia, the population is very big. There are almost 10 times Malaysia. So big population and the living standard also is not compared to like 15 years ago. And uh, sausage also become one of the food that they like so much because it's a bit like but it's a western it's a western thing. And uh, most of these people they were poor, but now they can afford. And the sausage we produce, uh, we have the same protein, uh, but the price is very cheap, it's very important. Because we are using this uh, soy base to uh, supplement the uh, to something to, 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 to make the protein content the same as the meat content. So living standard go up in Indonesia. Many people can afford to buy. And it's, it's affordable. So it's just a start. It's just a starting for this one. Same also for Philippines. Philippines used to import a lot of uh, frozen food. From but I think now the local start to use uh, locally and we evolve uh, with many new 
Philippines, and especially in, in Indonesia, because you know, our history there was much more. Okay. How long is a life uh lifespan for the machine? Very long. <laughs> it depends also the factory, how they take care of the machine. It's like a car. When you buy a car, you don't take care, then of course there will be a lot of maintenance. And uh, you know, for a machine like us, our customer did we expect normally you know, when they talk about this kind of machine, they are talking about they delete us to the European machine. So we are talking about European machine. The manufacturer they will feel proud if he has a European machine that's running for 50 years. I think you know this is something good. But for today, it's because the it's not the machine change, it's the food change. So when the food change, you don't need to wait for the machine to break down to buy the new machine for the new products. So the machine may last long, but it doesn't mean that you know you keep. You, you will not replace the machine. You keep placing the machine for new products to, to fit into your market or to get more uh, market share. So in general, I would like to say our machine will last 20 years. Because we have machine running even today, 25 years, still doing good. Same speed as uh, no, we supply the first. That's me and APP supply good quality machine. But that's important. That's how it's you know, we are doing with your companies. I think quality has to be measured. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Could you provide more details on the flexible packaging market? The, the flexible packaging, um, if you look around in the market, it's, it's still quite a competitive, competition side, the flexible packaging. But we are doing it in a, a bit different way. What we do, you know, we build a lot also of the SME uh, customer, especially in Asia. There are so many small, small companies. They are like big companies. So, and they are so small for them to find the magazine material, a good looking magazine material. Normally, it will cost them a lot of money to buy. So, it's very hard for them to get a start. We here, we understand the, the problem. So we help also the small seniors to make the firm for them in a small money. But of course, we charge a bit higher. So we charge a bit, uh, a bit higher compared to the firm, but we make them have a chance to sell the product. The load will be saved as the big company to use. But then he's not big, but at least you know, he can uh, sell his product in the it's like, it's like one stop solution and then Yaskali sell all the products and then through EPP. Yeah, we, we, we don't sell the, the the product itself. I mean, the, the, yeah, the food. machine. Yeah, but we put a table packaging. We put a line. It's one line. Just now we also mentioned about the Indonesian and Philippine market. And here is a question about the foreign currency. How does it benefit your business? We supply to Philippine and Indonesia by we transfer US dollar. Uh, okay. Our company adopt a natural hedge policy. So we don't actually hedge foreign currency. Then cost when US USD then we must definitely uh, have a positive impact to our PNL, but it will not be significant. Here is another question for the factory or production size. Could you share with us uh, what is the current factory or production size to give the 122 million revenue for financial year 2023? The present factory size. Like factory size present is. No, I think we have two plants together. The plant one is our is our main office is our two acre, and then another one is one acre. But uh, due to some of the big project, right, we assembly in customer place. 
So we you we can we cannot compare like the relative the size of the factory related with our uh revenue. But total we have two plants. One is two acre, one is one acre. Because for a project like frozen food, sometimes we just uh, directly we just do the installation at the at the site. Because this takes a lot of space. It's a, it's a huge sometimes the project is big and it takes a lot of space. So that's why we want to go to the big want to have more space so that at least we can assemble the and show the other customer from the other companies. Because a big uh, like a frozen food project, sometimes the investment is not small. So to convince a new customer to be good that we can show the thing that we do in effect, that will bring us more uh, business. Rather than just show them a video. You know, and then sometimes it's very inconvenient to bring them to our customer because they are actually operating. So they would like it. So having a new uh, factory is very important because we can show more to the new customer. Okay. And do you have any dividend policy? Um, we do not have any dividend policy. Uh, however, our board intended to uh, distribute dividend up to twenty five percent based on audited accounts, uh, audited numbers of our PAD. What is the average duration for the new machine setup from requirement to deliver to the customer side? Okay, you know we have machine start from five hundred million, small machine. We have project that go up to ten. So the duration is very much depend on the project size. So it can be you know immediately small machine. Or it can be 30 days for the 100,000 below project, or it could be 60 days for 500,000 below, or it could be like six months for 5 million project. So it's very really subject. If I'm out, it's the project. Do you want to share with us the first quarter of uh, 2024 for the result, declining the revenue and PAT? Uh, this one will so okay. Basically, our uh, project, our big project, or other twenty project, is this stress six to nine months. So generally, uh, we don't actually recognize our revenue based on percentage of completion. We recognize our revenue on the delivery of completion. So uh, generally, we will recognize significant revenue. Uh, in quarter three and quarter four. Quarter three and quarter four. What is the entry qualification to this industry and any certification requirement? I believe that it's the experience in this industry because we are um, very, we have like almost 30 years of experience and track records with our customers. And we do understand the food industry very well. So that uh it is not like we need to have whatever certificates or patents on the machine. It's how we have our skill and knowledge on the food because like the food, the main thing is how to prolong the shelf life, how we process the food and how we get what the customer want, the capacity and speed everything. So in in terms of uh Qualification or certificates required. Uh, there's no only one. If you talk about machine, of course, the machine has like, like C certified, it's not a minimum. But in terms of all the things that we provide to the customer, it's more on reliance of the experience that we have on the management teams. Okay. Okay, here is the AI question about any usage of AI in machinery production line. I think just now the expansion plan is mentioned about you, right? Yeah, 
the robotic. Yeah, AI is uh... We are working all the while we have been uh, we are doing the automation. It means we automate each machine so that you save the paper. So in the past two years, we have been involved in uh, robotic that we call industry AI. So going on forward, we need to think it. So AI is not now, but this is coming. I think we are we are doing a little bit of uh, now work now, but uh, not in a in a big way. So definitely AI will come because our system by having AI in there it will be more time and the uh, feedback is more accurate to the to the to the world. and uh, having that accurate then you can your better costing your profit for the things I think that's what our customers. Okay. From here, excuse me. From here, will you hire new employee after completing the manufacturing, uh, the factory? Especially with just now, you mentioned the increase of use of robotic. Definitely. Very good. People more young, young, uh, graduate, uh, engineer. Okay, you continue hire. Talents la in future. No, we started. <laughs> okay. Then currently, are you facing any labor shortage? Labor shortage, uh, we have been um, not really. Really, there's a labor shortage because uh, if you look at the, um, not not that. We, we don't have that much uh, labor shortage. We are not in the fast production. So, most of the our parts is done by the CNC. So, by the machine. So, only we need uh, more engineering. But the uh, engineering, I think, yeah. if we don't have them, we can always get more. Uh, so, the system is not good. Can you share with us how many employees do you have and the breakdown between the foreign and local level? Local, we have 100 and foreign, we have 110 or 120. And then for local, I believe that is range 40 something to 50, that range. Below 50, yeah. We want to share with us uh, how does the price of raw material such as the standard steel and aluminium affect your business operation? Raw material. Raw material. Raw material. There was a bit of something with supply, but in general, stabilize. Now, stabilize the material cost. We are, we are not like doing COVID nineteen was but now I think you know, we don't feel any even about this thing because uh, like, it doesn't happen that much. The price of the material. The fluctuation of the price of uh, the price is not that it is not that significant to us. Okay. Just now we also uh, saw that you share with us the upcoming manufacturing expansion plan in Benin. Could you explain more in detail and how it will benefit and increase revenue for APP? Okay, the new plan is in the next week. Uh, we so the thousands will be the number one because if you are if you uh, can visit our factory now, we'll see the uh, constraint of space. We don't have enough space going for that. So we definitely we need the new factory. So the new factory, the plan for it, so for the new factory is number one, we will uh, we need a uh, bigger warehouse. We also need the uh, the place the space for our robotic uh, expansion. Because this is the uh, everywhere we want to focus more. 
as a you know robot uh, with a lot of uh, assisting assisting customers who are actually at the uh, industry 2.3 2.5 so robot come in will fill up the gap of 3.0 and then go to the next level robot. so robot will be the, the future uh, lead in the food industry what is uh, you know, the cost is not so high now we can produce a much lower cost robot compared to to the past and robot is very hygiene you know there's no human interference you can cut down a lot of the hard labor costs so another one is we are you know from time to time we always have uh, some collaboration with other but so when it comes to space if we don't have the space then this collaboration will not be able to continue to to discuss because if there's no space, there's nothing. So there are many things coming to our heart. That's why we need space. We need to have a space in order to have the other party to really come to us and do more for our business. And also, like I said just now, we need it, we need more space also for display. So that when we build the machine, we can have other new customers come and visit our factory to look at the machine that something related to them. So this, these are the benefits that uh, we are going to we expect to have in the new, uh, new, new factory. Okay. Will you provide how long uh, will be expected like completion time for the construction work? Um, two, zero, two, Okay. Yeah. Two more years? Uh, I want to go over the past. <laughs> okay, then we wait for the upcoming news. Yeah. Because we need space. All right, I think we answer all of the questions. Okay, Mr. Yu, do you have any closing remark before we end tonight? Um, I think, I think uh, we just want to say thank you to everyone who's been involved in the question and answer process. It's good to hear that there's a lot of interest in the different types of questions that are being asked from a financial standpoint, strategic standpoint, in our expansions and also in the industry growth. So hopefully we answered all of your questions today. Um, we hope that our group has a bright future and we see that there's a lot of growth potential for us. So hopefully all of you guys got that today as well. Um, and if there are other questions, I'm sure we'll be able to yeah, email us and get back to you guys. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Yen. Okay, thank you, uh, Diane. Thank you, Mr. Yu, and thank you, everyone. And once again, congrats on your upcoming listing on Ace Market on 23rd of August. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.